Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. In this video, we're going to learn how to import and query JSON documents using DuckDB. Now we're going to be using an expected goals dataset. And expected goals is effectively the football version of Moneyball. So every shot that a player takes is given a probability that it results in a goal. And we've got a whole load of these shots from a bunch of matches from the English Premier League. Uh, so let's get to it. So we're going to be using the DuckDB CLI again. So let's launch that. The default mode that DuckDB uses is called DuckBox. And I find that was truncating everything. So we're going to use a different mode. So we're going to use a mode that's called Line. And so that will show us all the documents to make it a bit easier uh, to process. Now let's start by doing a query that reads, uh, uses a function called read JSON objects and you can pass it in a single file or a bunch of files. And so you can see there's loads of stuff. And if we scroll up to the top, you can see at the top level, there is an H uh, property and there's actually an A1 as well, but let's stick with H uh, to begin with. And we can then sort of narrow in on it. So we can use this JSON extract function, which takes in a JSON path uh, expressions. And so we can see there we, we get that. And it's still qu quite a lot of data. There is also an alias uh, where we say the name of the field, so JSON, a little arrow, and then we can put in the JSON path there and that will pull it out. And when you're using those functions, it's getting you like a JSON object. Although in this case, like the whole thing is, is a, a bit more of a complex structure. There is then an alternative function called JSON underscore extract underscore string. And this one uh, converts everything to a string. Although in my case, since it's a, it's a complex object anyway, it just seems to be to do the same thing. And then the shortcut for that, this shortcut operator is uh, like with a two greater than signs instead of one. So let's zoom it in a bit. It's a bit, it's a bit tricky to read still, but what about if we just select one of the records underneath the home team? So let's get one of those. And so you can see that's a little bit easier to read. And so we can see we've got an ID, we've got the minute that the shot happened, we've got the result of the shot. So in this case, it was a missed shot. We've got the player who took the shot. We've got the XG, so the expected goals. What was the likelihood? So in this case, it was 7% likely to result in a goal, we've got the teams that were involved and we've got a, a few other bits of information. There's loads of stuff uh, that we can analyze in this data set. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the home and the away shots data into a temporary table called raw shots. And then once we've done that, we can call this function called JSON structure. And so this will tell us like the actual structure of everything. And so you can see here, we've got all the fields. And so let's copy that onto the clipboard because we're going to use that in our next query. So our next query is using a function called JSON transform. And so we can pass in the, the name of our field, so the name of our JSON, so it was JSON, and then pass in the structure that we know that it has from the previous query. And then we're also going to call unnest. And so what unnest does is it unpacks uh, an array of what we've got actually here is structs. So we're going to have an array of structs and we're going to unpack those and print them out. Uh, and so you can see there, like it, it prints it out. It's much easier to read now rather than having it stuck inside an array. What we're going to do next is we're going to store that in a table and we'll also update the type so that not everything is a var chart. If we do describe shots afterwards, we can see everything. So we can see this is the, the structure of the table, of the column in the table that we've created. So we've got a one, <laughs> one column table. Um, the column is called row. And you can see the ID is a big int, the minute is a big int, and then most importantly, XG uh, is a double. And, and you can see we've got a few other fields as well. And if we select uh, something from that table, you can see now we've got back like the record, everything is, uh, everything is loaded. So let's now switch back to duck box mode and have a look at some interesting queries that I prepared earlier. So we're gonna start by finding the top teams based on their total XG. So across like all the seasons, I think it goes back to 20, 2014. So 2014 up to 2023. And so if we run that query, it comes back and it says, oh, Manchester City uh, have the, the, the best, the most XG. So they've taken the most shots that were expected to re result in goals. So it's kind of unsurprising. They have been the best team uh, during that period. You can see Liverpool are next and then you've got kind of other big teams, Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, Manchester United, and then there's a few other teams below that. Uh, what about if we add in some extra fields? So let's count how many matches they played and maybe also compute the XG per match. So how many goals were they expected to score per match? And so again, you can see if we run that query, Manchester City again are at the top. And so we can see there's actually quite a big difference. So Man City's expected goals per game is 2.28. If we go down to Everton in 10th place, it's 1.3. So it's like, it's almost, it's not quite half, but it's, it's sort of close to half, isn't it? So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so what happens if we zoom in on Man City? So let's have a look at Man City across all the seasons. We'll break it down by season rather than 
uh, having the, the total. And so here we can see like how things ebb and flow. So we can see the best season was in 2019. They were, they were approaching like 2.75. So they actually got 2.73 in that season. And then it went down a bit and then it went up again in uh, 2021. So they won, they won the, I think they won the, did they win the title in that season. I think they might've done. And what about if we look across the 2022 season for everyone? Um, so this time we're going to also bring in the goals. So we have to add in a bit of a, a extra part to the query to make sure that we're only considering goals because they also have uh, own goals in there as well. So we just need to make sure that we uh, that we capture only the goals that have been scored by a team. And so if we run that query, again, we get Man City are, are sitting at the top uh, for this season. Uh, Leicester, interestingly, are in second. And we can kind of we can also see the difference between the number of goals that they scored and the number they, they were expected to score. And you can see there are eight teams. Eight teams have scored more than were expected. You can see Manchester City, Leicester, Tottenham, to a lesser extent, Arsenal and Brighton are scoring more than you would expect. Let's uh, kind of conclude these queries by having a look at the players. So those are in there as well. So we can have a look at the top players across all the seasons. And so perhaps unsurprisingly, the top uh, in terms of XG is, is Harry Kane. So he's been playing and scoring and taking a lot of shots uh, across all those seasons. So he's got uh, total XG of 172, which is converted into 196 goals. So he's actually scoring more uh, goals than you might expect him to. Then we've got Sergio Aguero, who actually left, I think it was a couple of seasons ago. So he went to, he went to Barcelona and then ended up retiring. And then after that, we've kind of got, you sort of, it's got the who's who's, who's who even of the big strikers in the Premier League. So we've got Vardy, we've got Salah, we've got Sterling, we've got Mane, who's left as well. Uh, and then we've got a few others too. And finally, one more, let's have a look. If we switch it around, so instead of like the total XG, let's have a look at the XG per match. And this time we're going to make sure it's only people who have played 10 matches or more. And so this time we get some of the, the big strikers for this season. So we've got Erling Haaland, who's kind of looking to break every single record. So he scored 25 goals, uh, is expected to score one goal per game, is actually scoring 1.3. We've also got Darwin Nunes down in third place. And then we can see Harry Kane is down there in fourth place. Uh, and so that's the end of this video in which we've learned how to import and query JSON data in DuckDB. If you found this video useful, have a look at the DuckDB playlist uh, for more videos. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.